Well, hello strange people, and welcome back to the channel. <coughs> Brought myself out onto the moor today. Quick shifty around, look. Absolutely gorgeous. Really nice. It was misty up here this morning. That's cleared. High cloud. A little bit of sunshine. Very nice. I don't know where we're going really. Just out for a, a jant, really, a skank. The uh, little ponies I passed back there, the Dartmoor pony, little horse really, I suppose. It's the last, or one of the last, living representations of the Bronze Age in the UK. Those are the very same horses that Bronze Age man used up here to pull his carts and I suppose they rode them. They can be ridden by adults but it's not advisable. But uh, certainly not large adults. Children can ride them. But uh, yeah, they were used, used in the pits as well. But certainly in the Bronze Age, in the Bronze Age, they'd have been utilised and they're unchanged, pretty much unchanged since, since then. It's 4,000 odd years. It's incredible. You know, Sandy puts a representation of the, now I might get this wrong because I've been racking my brains halfway up the hill trying to remember. I think it's the, is it the Uffington White Horse? It's one of the white horses in Wiltshire anyway. It's a representation of it on his knife. That horse was made somewhere between 900 and 1300 BC. And it's a, basically it's a representation of a Dartmoor pony. So there you go, Sandy puts Dartmoor ponies on his knives. Sorry Sandy. But uh, there's a, there's a uh, quest for you Sandy. Uh, make a bronze, a bronze jackalaw. That'll test your skills. <laughs> anyway, I'll catch you all in a mo. I've still got some walking the day before the sun goes down. Well, this is quite odd. I was uh, just talking about the ponies in the Bronze Age, and I've stumbled across a little settlement that I didn't even know was here. There's at least there's one here. There's another one. Just over there, it's actually still got quite high walls by the look of it. I was heading towards a little village further along, but I'm just going to explore this one a minute because, as I say, I didn't even know it was here. I didn't even know it was here. It looks as though there's some walls further on up the way up there. This is wonderful. What a view! I'll just pan you around. We're on the edge of the moor, on the edge, literally entering Tavy Cleave, which is the, the gorge that the Tavy runs into as it comes off the high moor. Look at this for a view. Look at that. I'm pretty sure I can just about make out the china clay tips of St Austell, which are 35, maybe 40 miles away. What a view. This one must have been rebuilt and and that one, or not rebuilt, but certainly tarted up a bit. I've never seen walls this high before. Never. 
trying to count how many there are, there must be six. So there's a proper little settlement. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. When you look closely, you see lots of little features, little walls that run around, like compound walls. Brilliant. Okay, I'll bring you back in a moment. Look at the sun moving up through the valley. Well, I'm going to be knocking on the head trying to get up to the, uh, the other Bronze Age village. It's way up there. Time's running down. There's a bit of cloud coming in from the west. And uh, I'm hungry, so uh, I'm going to find a little spot, probably down in this little cleave here, and have something to eat. Catch you in a mo. Well, that's lunch done. It, uh, nothing exciting, just a tin of uh, mackerel and um, in some wraps. I've got my coffee. I'll get my pipe out in a minute. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for all your lovely comments on my last video. Um, I haven't commented back on them, uh, basically because uh, a lot of you asked similar sort of questions it would have just been repeating myself. Um, it would just look like a copy paste. So I thought I'd answer a few of your questions on the video. Tools wise, uh, I'm going to be okay for tools. Um, there were some sentimental losses. Uh, I did lose um, some of my grandfather's tools. He's been gone now for my paternal grandfather, he's been gone there for 20 years. Um, some of it's a, I've lost a few hammers, chisels, um, planes, a huge tree felling saw, which I actually believe might have been my great grandfather's. Um, so that, that's all gone. Can't replace them, they're just, you know, they're sent sentimental memories sentimental things and just memories um, but it is what it is isn't it at the end of the day outdoor kit loss uh, I lost nothing from the out my outdoor kit which actually is a blessing because it's a blessing that I, I broke the app go because it would normally have been hanging up to dry in there um, but because I'd broken the pole and uh, um, punctured that little hole in it. I took it home and it was it's hanging in my bath, well, it was hanging in my bathroom at the time. So uh, no, I didn't lose any outdoor kit, thankfully, but thank you for everybody that offered outdoor kit and again, thank you for everybody who offered for tools. Uh, it's very kind of you and, and I am actually quite humbled by that. Um, you know, I was said I don't, I don't, I'm not chasing subscribers. I just like the right kind of subscribers, and, and even the even the chap that put a dislike on there. Thank you very much for that. Um, it just goes to show that I've got the right kind of subscribers. The few that I've got, so thank you. Um, 
my staff. Somebody asked about what my staff was made of. This this old beast. I used to use aluminium poles, but um, I found they just kept um, the joints in them. They just they just weren't very strong. So uh, I did have I did have a beautiful rosewood um, walking stick that I made. Blimey, when I was in my twenties. This one is is uh, made of yew. It's a, a branch uh, off a tree that I didn't want to cut down, but um, I had to. I was ordered to at work. It was seasoned probably 18 months before I turned it into my walking stick, so it's perfectly all right. It's a, it's a little bit weighty, I suppose, and it does have. You can see it, it does have a slight bend in it, but that doesn't worry me. It, um, it's stronger than those aluminium things, which I really, I don't get on with. Uh, the little, little plaque on there is a bear, which I got myself in Montana. I, I collect anything with bears on it, so. Um, yeah, so that's what this is. It's just a piece of, piece of you. I made some spoons out of offcuts. Um, which are totally useless, I can't use them. I started making a cookser out of uh, out of an off cut of it as well, but uh, that was only ever going to be for show. And I, I, I put it, it wasn't seasoned properly at all, and I put it down near a heater and it cracked, so still, never mind. So that's what that is to you. Um, the biggest losses I had from that fire were actually from a boat. The last, if you remember, I, I, those of you that have been around for a while, I did um, say I might stop making videos of myself doing up my boat. And um, I'd been collecting things over, over a period of time to, um, to put in the boat and then obviously make a start on, on doing her. Um, that all went up in smoke, <laughs> all of the things. So it was an oven or a, a stove, um, for bits of wood which, were, which I was going to use for uh, interior. That's all gone up in smoke. The, one of the outboards has gone up in smoke. Luckily, I'd sent off the big outboard to be fixed. Um, and that, so that wasn't there, but the smaller outboard was there. Um, the two biggest losses are the uh, rudder. I had a beautiful four foot long rudder, um, which I'd not long ago sanded down, ready to be uh, varnished. So that went up, and the mast. The mast is, well, it's, a, it's a 20, Five feet, I think it is 25 foot mast. It's now about four feet long. It melted. So I really don't know what to do about that. So those were my biggest losses, anyway. Um, what other questions were there? I did write some down, but I've forgotten now. I can't remember. I can't remember. Uh, I think it was Steve who said he bought himself a pipe and put it in his glove compartment. Mate, you're either going to have to go for it and smoke it or sell it. Because if you start smoking it, your wife's going to know. So you, you might as well bite the bullet, my friend. You might as well bite the bullet. I think that's it. It's starting to get really cloudy now, so I'm probably going to call it here. Knock it on the head. It's really just a video to say thank you to uh, to everybody for your lovely. They were really nice comments. I was really quite touched by them. So thank you very much. I'm almost tempted to cross the river. 
I'd cross the river, I'd knock off nearly two miles on my walk back, but if I slip, it's going to be a cold walk back. Right, I'm going home because I live there. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the lovely comments. Thank you for being great subscribers. Thank you.